a less so much of a factor is your belief systems. But they are still very important. When I say it's less of a factor, if I have humility, then I'm willing to listen to a person confronting my belief. But if I don't have humility, then I won't let my beliefs be confronted. Can you see that? Now, many mediums have belief systems that come from sixth sphere or from natural love spirits. That's just a byproduct of the fact that there are far more spirits on the natural love path than there are on the divine love path. So there are going to be more spirits communicating those beliefs to earth and because those beliefs are lower beliefs in terms of the truths, they are the ones with the most rapport with people on earth. Is that, you can see that? Rapport, remember, is created by conditions, soul conditions. So if my soul condition is second sphere, I'm, connecting, I'm going to connect to second sphere soul conditioned spirits and what truths do they have compared to a celestial spirit? They might have very little compared to a celestial spirit, right? So I will start transmitting truths that are actually not true if I stay in that condition. And if I'm not aware of their condition and aware of what beliefs are actually a part of that condition, then I will start transmitting belief systems to the earth. And the earth is full of false belief systems. And you know what? The spirit world is full of spirits in pain because of the false belief systems they picked up while they're on earth. So we want to not do that anymore. We don't want to transmit these false belief systems to earth. What we want is we want the truth to be transmitted to earth, which is going to mean that our belief systems, whatever they are, are going to be confronted. And if you're not willing to confront your belief systems, then you're going to find development on the divine love path very difficult. Because most belief systems are of the, the mind. They are of the intellect. You follow me? A desire for you to know is what creates a belief system. On the divine love path, you are going to lose your desire to know. Instead, what you are going to do is you are going to experience rather than know. And then you will really know in your heart, in your soul. That makes sense to everyone, doesn't it? Yeah. So, any belief systems are of the mind, so therefore what's going to happen is your mind will get in the way of everything you do. Now when you're channeling, there are a couple of different types of channeling that I mentioned later. And when you're channeling, you might be doing trance channeling. The trance channeling is when the spirit form and the soul of the person steps back from the physical body and the spirit actually connects and overcloaks the physical body. And the voice might even change and everything might change. You know, you, the mannerisms will change of the person and everything, right? That's called a trance mediumship. Now there is a common misconception on earth that when you're doing trance mediumship, you're the most accurate. But what have I said? All transmission is dependent upon soul condition. So why would your accuracy be different? You see, it's the soul condition that determines your accuracy. Right? Not whether you're doing trans mediumship or not. Now, a lot of spirits enjoy trans mediumship because they don't have to wait for you to relay everything. In other words, I, let's say I'm a spirit, Brian's the medium, Ray is the person he's talking to. I say to Brian, hello Brian, it's lovely to see you. And then I've got to wait for Brian to say to Ray, oh, he, he says, Hello, Raya, it's lovely to see you, or whatever, right? And then I, oh, and now Raya, uh, please look at your emotion about such and such. And Brian then has to say, well, he's saying, please look at your emotion, Raya, about such and such. Now, I'm, I'm waiting all this time, right? Now, it will be far better if I could just overcloak Brian and just say all of these things straight to Raya. Does that make sense? Yes. Obviously, the communication is far more effective in, from my point of view because I can say all of these things quite rapidly rather than waiting for this, tra you know, this transmission acknowledgement and then I've got to go again and, and it's a stop and start process. So obviously transmediumship has its benefits for me as a spirit, so a lot of spirits love doing it. 
but don't you believe as a medium that it means you're more accurate? Because the accuracy of the information is still dependent upon your soul condition. You follow me? Yeah. All right. And Jay, where's free will in that process? Transmediumship. Well, I'm allowed to step back from my spirit form. That's just me going out of body like I do every night when I go to sleep. Right? So every night that you go to sleep, you go out of body. Your soul and your spirit body, you're in the spirit world, you're doing things up there, setting up events, having a chat with some friends, doing all those kind of things. Yeah, you're doing much more, by the way, but I won't mention all those other things that you're doing. But what actually happens is you are out of body at that point. Your body is in a state where another spirit could use it if you chose to do so. Now, as a medium, you can choose to go out of body at any time and your, your body can be used by a spirit directly. Right? And this happens all the time, by the way, for many people who do trance mediumship. And you will develop in your mediumship to the point where you will feel comfortable with doing that. Carol? Actually, is it dangerous? Like, could you just not like, stay there and not get it? <laughs> <laughs> their, their connecting with your body is totally dependent upon your will. So, ones like, say, Barbara and some like that on Earth. It has become dangerous for them because, say, Barbara's free will is that I'm going to be permanently connected to this six-fear spirit. And so the majority of the time, he isn't himself anymore. He's the six-fear spirit using his body. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that can be quite a dangerous thing to do. Not from a physical point of view, but more from a developmental point of view. Because what we start doing is we start assuming, because I can do all of these wonderful <coughs> things and I can levitate and I can do this and I can do that, that it's me that's doing it. And remember what I said about humility, it ain't you doing it, it's the spirit doing it, right? And if we start thinking it's me, we stop developing ourselves. <coughs> and if you stop developing yourself, what happens then? You get stuck in, say, Barbo is one of those people who are stuck in a certain condition on earth, the first fear condition on earth, but who is a very, very good connection with the spirit who keeps him in a six fear state for the majority of the time. So that's definitely possible for you too, but I don't recommend it. 